How is it going, everybody? This is RBT coming at you with my Chick-fil-A Bowl recap video. The Texas A&M Aggies find a way to win over the Duke Blue Devils, 52-48, to and an amazing game, and it was crazy. It was absolutely crazy, and if you watch my video before this, I said uh, that all the bowl games have seemed like they've been blowouts. The three today have been 30-point uh, victories, so it seems like we've been having some lackluster bowl games this season. Well, I got what I wanted tonight. What a great game by both teams. What you got to give props to Duke. Nobody expected that. Everybody was confident Texas A&M was going to blow them out of the water. Uh, in bold pick them ahead. I had this game as my top pick A&M over Duke. So you got to give all the credit in the world to Duke. They came out just fired on all cylinders. Gave Texas A&M the game of their life, and uh, they definitely have it going in the right direction. You got to give all the credit in the world to Duke. They're still. They're on the way there. They have a young team that I remember Boone, Crowder is all coming back next year, so they could make this run again next year. So uh, props to Duke on a great game. Now getting into the game, uh, the momentum shifted real early on because A&M got the ball. I mean, Johnny and Mike Evans moving down the field. And then two big penalties from Mike Evans and uh, I think it was another false start or holding penalty brought them back and they ended up having a punt in the drive and it seemed like they were going to easily score. Then Duke gets the football back and is lights out. They scored on all five drives. All, well, they scored touchdowns on the first five drives of the game. That is unheard of. Duke scoring 35 straight points on all of their drives. They were magnificent on third down, magnificent on fourth down. They uh, And on the last drive, they had a little time, ended up kicking a field goal on that drive. But um, it's still, at halftime, this game is 38-17. to um, A&M had a couple drives where they didn't score, but then after that, after they were unstoppable. But the problem was, it wasn't their offense. Their defense was horrendous in the first half. Absolutely horrible. Uh, they they were doing anything they wanted to on offense. And then on the flip side, Duke was doing the same thing. But they were behind because they didn't score the first couple times, and they got no stops at all. The defense was horrible. I'm pretty sure Duke had around 400 yards of offense in the first quarter, or in the first half. So that was a shock. It was 38-17, to a three-touchdown game at halftime, if I'm not mistaken. But, of course, you can't count out Johnny Football and the A&M Aggies at any point in any game. Well, you see, they can score at any given time. And they came out roaring. They scored. They, they got a couple stops. They got a couple of interceptions. And they ultimately came back. A couple big plays by uh, one of the receivers. He was. They said he was a walk-on. No, he was a practice dummy on the women's basketball team. Travis Labhart was his name. He had three touchdown catches in this game. And one, that one of uh, Johnny Manziel's, one of his magician plays where he scrambled, looped over the line, and rolled out. That was him that caught that pass. So he wasn't really wrecking. Like, they didn't even talk about him really in the game. He just had three huge touchdown passes, mid catches with 76 yards. He had Darrell Walker as well, had that last touchdown catch, catch six reception, 113 yards, and a touchdown. But after those first few stalled drives from AM, it seems like they were unstoppable, as Duke was in the first half. But the problem was, AM was unstoppable in the second half, and Duke. Got stopped a couple times, but the game, no matter how great each team will do played on offense, uh, no matter how great Anthony Boone played, you got to look at the stats, 29 of 45, 427 yards. Three touchdowns was great, absolutely great, but then two huge interceptions late in the game is what was the difference. Turnovers. Turnovers was the difference. a &M had none. And then Duke had two, and that was the big difference in the game. And they came late in the game. They were up trying to go down the field, take a two-possession lead with about five minutes left. I can tell you exactly how much time was left. There was, Yep, there was about six minutes left. Wait, no, no. Three minutes left in the game at this time, and Duke was still in the lead and trying to go down the field and uh, take the take a two-possession lead. And they, if I was them, I'd have kept running the football. They were running the football pretty conveniently all game long and they could have ran some more time off the clock but they kept throwing the football and Anthony Anthony Boone made a mistake threw it over to the right side late and a pick six from Anthony Boone brought it back 55 yards for a touchdown that gave them the lead then Duke comes back they are converting on almost every third down they have to go down the field and score and they got a couple first fourth down conversions and then once again Anthony Boone was pressured and makes a Bad decision. He just tried to throw it away. It landed right in the hands of an A&M lineman. Picked it off. Game over. A&M wins. What a crazy game. Like I said, you got to give all the credit in the world to Duke. 
what a crazy game. But it just seems just right that Johnny Manziel finishes his career like this. Uh, presumably, I mean, I'm pretty sure we all believe he's going to go pro, but we never know. You never know. But uh, kind of crazy though. He didn't get the ball after the uh, after the five minute mark. Last six minutes. Last uh, it's crazy. Last six minutes minutes of the end of each half. Johnny Manziel didn't have the football. It was Duke and the end of the second half. First half, Duke scored a touchdown and got an onside kick, went out of the field and kicked that field goal. So they ran out all the time there. But once again, another phenomenal performance by Johnny Manziel. The defense of Texas A&M was horrendous. The whole entire game, really, especially on third downs, that was ridiculous, and on fourth downs as well. But, hey, you do whatever you have to do to win as bad as you are. They made two big plays in the end of the game, and those two big plays were the difference. So no matter how bad they played, they made the plays when they had to. Um, but speaking of third downs, Duke was 9 of 15 on third downs. a and was 4 of 9, and, and Duke was four, 3 of 4 on fourth downs. And the one fourth down they did not get it, I do not understand what they did. They did a play-action pass when all three previous fourth down conversions, they ran the football. So on fourth and one, they ran a play-action uh, uh, bootleg to the left, and nobody was open, and uh, Boone didn't have anywhere to throw the football. So what a great game. Like I said, all kinds of offense in this game. Those offenses were unstoppable, and uh, i got to give all the credit in the world to David Cutcliffe and Duke for what they've done with this program, completely, completely revived this program, and I think they're young, and they have, I think next year they can be right back in it, and they can maybe even have a better year next year. Um, they just got to keep their heads up. I mean, you still got to have a fabulous season. Be proud of how you played in this game. Nobody expected them to win, so congrats to them, and also congrats to Texas A&M on a big win, judging overcome adversity, and congratulations to Johnny Manziel, one of the best careers in all of college football history. Uh, some may consider him, me included, as one of the best and most exciting players to watch in the history of college football. So um, that's about it. Let me tell you the final stats in the game. Like I said, Duke, okay, third downs already told you. Total yards was in favor of Duke, 661 to 541. But yardage does not matter if you lose the turnover battle. Um, they had 427 yards of passing. A&M had 382, 234 yards rushing for Duke. And 159 rushing yards for A&M. And that's something else. I think I thought Duke really got away from the running game in the second half. And they were really they had a lot of success with it in the first half, but in the second half they did not do much running. Um, and and A&M had four penalties, and two of those were huge in the first drive. So Mike Evans was kind of out of control in that first drive. Um, he had, uh, he got a he got two personal foul penalties in the first drive, if I'm not mistaken. Um. But individual stats, like I said, Anthony Boone, 29 to 45, 427 yards, three touchdowns, two interceptions, and all those those two came in the last three minutes of the game. Johnny Menzel was 30 to 38, 382 yards, four touchdowns. He was making great throws all game long. It was crazy. Uh, Josh Sneed had 17 carries, 104 yards, and a touchdown. Jawan Thompson, 11 carries, 92 yards. Anthony Boone had the other rushing touchdown, and Brandon Kinnett had the other touchdown. He's the, the quarterback that comes in on the goal line and runs the football, even though in this game they didn't they left him out for the most part because uh, Boone was playing so great. And then on the flip side, Manziel had 73 yards rushing and a touchdown. Trey Carson had the other touchdown rushing. And uh, who was that receiver for Duke that had that crazy catch? Um, that was David Reeves, his third, third catch of the season, and had that crazy sports center top 10 catch. So... Uh, if you don't, haven't seen that, go watch a highlight of it. That was one of the craziest catches. He was a magician on the sidelines. Remind me of Greg McElroy in the 2009 SEC Championship game. That was crazy. But Jamison Crowder, what a f magnificent player. He's an absolute beast. I've seen him multiple times this season. The guy is a playmaker, and he they have Jamison Crowder and Anthony Boone coming back next season. Unless, for some reason, Jamison Crowder decides to leave for the NFL. I, I don't think that would be likely, but... Guy's an absolute playmaker, and if he comes back next year, he could he can uh, set some records for sure. And he had Braxton Deaver had six receptions, 116 yards. So that's about it, guys. Both kicking games were uh, well. Actually, eight, uh, Duke had one missed field goal. I forgot about that. And so did Josh Lambo. That on the first drive they attempted a field goal, and uh, it was like a 55 yard field goal. And he had the leg, but it went to the right. But I still thought both kicking games were for the most part solid. So um, I guess that it gets that is it, guys. A great game. Let me know what you thought about this game in the comment section below. If you're a fan of either of these teams, let me know what you think this game means for your program going forward. Uh, be sure to big hit big hit the like button if you haven't already, and be sure to subscribe to my channel so you do not miss any of my bowl game coverage coming at you with bowl recaps of every single bowl game this bowl season. 
Be sure to follow me on Twitter at twitter.com slash SRTR. And as always, roll tie, go socks, and go Titans to you. Hope you have a happy and safe new year. Drive safe, guys. Catch you guys later. Peace.